What's going on you guys? Slim here with a new video today and today you guys I have the top five best decks for this May 2021 format. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, you guys will be notified whenever I upload. You'll also be notified when I stream over on Twitch, links in the description. While you're down there, consider joining my Discord community. If you're gonna purchase any of the cards to play any of the decks I talk about or just cards in general, please use my TCG player link as well as my gem accessories affiliate link. As a portion of what you spend on either of those sites will go back to the channel. It helps me out and I really do appreciate it. And last but not least, if you further want to support me and the content I make here on the channel, consider becoming a channel member by clicking that join button or by becoming one one of my patreons with all that out of the way you guys it's may formats changed a little bit formats pretty open there's a lot of good decks and you know the top five is pretty straightforward i'm actually not going to sugarcoat it this time i'm going to keep this as concise as possible i'm not going to mention you know all the trap decks and all that stuff you guys already know every time you know we do one of these top fives i mention them you know they're there brian chen sky strikers is your baby i'm always tell you that so if you're looking for that, that's it. There's your there's your your kick to Sky Strikers. But what I have for the top five decks is quite simple. Coming in at number five, I don't want to waste any more time. I have Tri Brigade. So usually I would say Bird Up. I would say you know Leerless, whatever. Summon Barrier Statue, go Burr. But things have changed with that deck. I know that Lund brought it to the LCS and played pure Tri Brigade. I've seen Zodiac Tri Brigade pop up everywhere. Apparently after the next set, their trap card revolt is searchable. Like the deck is only going to get better. So I have it at number five, even though these aren't in a super particular order. I think the deck has a lot of potential. The deck could just keep getting better. I've been watching uh, my boy Yishan's videos about the deck. I know that the deck is going to continue to thrive and just get better in the format. So I have to mention it. I think that the deck is already strong at what it does. It's already had success you know whether it was the Lyralist build the pure build or the zodiac build there's a lot of versatility with the deck it's very strong and your ability to you know lock the opponent out even with just the barrier statue is so crazy so like for that reason i really think that the deck is going to continue to get better so i really think that this is going to be the at least easily in the top five for the rest of the format i notice more and more players are playing cards like ghost bell and stuff like that to actually counter that deck so whenever the the main decks of the format are be either main decking or side decking for the deck you know the deck is doing well so I have Tri Brigade, all the variants at number five. Coming in at number four, I actually have Prank Kids. Um, what can I say? Prank Kids are just, they keep getting better, they keep getting more representation, and they keep just doing well on all aspects of the format. They took second in the Latin America Remote Duel uh, Invitational. If you guys, uh, yeah, I think it was the Invitational, whatever it was. They lost to Shadal, uh, Dogmatica invoked, but the deck still made it all the way to the finals. There was, I think, two prank kids in top four. Like, the deck continues to do well. It does well on the local level. It does well on the regional level. PVG had regionals. I know prank kids did well there. The deck is just really good. One card combos, you know, one prank kid. You play 11 or 12, depending on if you're playing the third Roxies or not. I mean, it does not get better than having all those one card starters. You have place to search your starters. You have your fusion cards. Like, the deck is very strong. The deck now plays there can only be one. I mean, that card literally cripples the format. So that card is absolutely insane. Very, very good against Dragon Link. I think the deck is very strong. Battle Battle Butler is just nuts being able to Raigeki the board. I think the deck is just very strong. Again, piloted by the right player. The deck will continue to see, you know, more success, continue to see more wins, continue to see more tops. And I'd be a disservice to not put it at number five, especially for the top decks of the format. I've noticed the representation has definitely gone up, and that's a good thing. Like I tell you guys, when I see more players playing a deck, when the representation goes up, it's a really good sign for how it will fare in the format. So I definitely had to have it at number uh, number four. I think it's very strong again piloted by the right player it will continue to do wonders and I think it's just very well engineered for how it can navigate through uh, a lot of the aspects of the format yes it is susceptible to hand traps but what deck isn't like what deck really doesn't get hurt by a single hand trap or something like that a lot of decks can play through hand traps and I know that again if the pilot is strong they know how to you know kind of uh, avenue that route to playing through hand traps and actually have a lot of success so that's why I have prank kids coming in at number four now coming in at number three I decided to add actually put Eldlich variants. Again, I've said this multiple times every time I talk about Eldlich. I can't just say Eldlich because the engine is thrown in so many different variants, whether it's the Zoo Eldlich deck, whether it's the pure Eldlich deck with all the trap cards. The new build that that pack brought to the forefront with Broken Line is crazy. I played against it myself. I think the deck is very strong. I've actually messed with the deck myself. Those trap cards are just nuts. Eldritch just thrives with a bunch of trap cards. Not only that, I mean, have you seen Eldritch Zoo? The deck is still everywhere. One of the best decks of the format. Probably the preferred build of Zodiac for a lot of players. It's just so versatile. It's literally, you have your Eldritch engine on top of being able to just go one Zoo monster, goes into Borbo, goes into Zeus, goes into 
there goes your board like it's pretty crazy i mean this is all stuff we've talked about before but if you look at the format a lot of the stuff has stayed the same but zodiac eldritch has the advantage of being able to play a lot of hand traps and those hand traps change every format i've noticed again we're seeing more bell we're seeing more phantasme for dragon link we're seeing of course ash we're seeing some nibiru's in the main deck depending on the deck and this is one of the few decks that can get away with playing all those hand traps because when all you need is one zoo monster and literally you have your eldritch engine to fall back on the rest of your space and your deck can be filled with hand traps and that's why the deck is so strong the deck can go first the deck can go second that's another thing all these decks on this list can do and by doing that it proves that the deck is very strong in the format so i definitely without a shadow of it i've had to have the eldritch engine eldritch variants on here there's so many there are so many variants and you know it just comes up to it comes down to like what is your preference do you want to play the pure build do you want to play the zodiac eldritch build do you want to just do some other crazy shenanigans with eldritch if you have an eldritch core you can do a lot i'm gonna just put it to you that way that's why i am so happy i finally picked up that core because it has opened you know the avenues the floodgates to so many different decks that i can play and I absolutely love it so yeah eldritch variants all of them coming in at number three number two is shadal dogmatica invoked winda the deck makaba the deck normal summon your boy alistair the deck um literally it's everywhere <laughs> Winda is insane. Winda's first three letters in its name say win for a reason. Being able to just activate Meltdown is insane. I don't think anyone saw how broken Meltdown was. Like, we've been summoning Alistair. I've been summoning at myself since 2017, and I think even now, Meltdown, Alistair, all that is absolutely bonkers, this format. The fact that you can melt down, the fact that you can get to Alistair, the fact that Invocation doesn't have to just summon Invoke Monsters is ridiculous. The fact that you can go into Winda, the fact that you can do so many things, and if you have the Meltdown up, your opponent can't respond. Like, it has gotten to the point of just pure insanity. Like, I talked about Super Poly's interaction in the Mirror Match. I've talked about all that, but literally we're at the point where the deck is just so strong. That deck did actually just win, again, the Latin America Remote Duel Invitational, so it proves how strong the deck is being being able to just you know i believe it also got second at the ppg regional so the deck is everywhere the shadal engine is nuts you play the dogmatica engine people think that that engine is bad that it will lock you out of your extra deck and that'll hurt you it will but nadir servant is such a busted card you get so many pluses off of it it sets up all your plays you know you can end on wind mechaba you can end on just so many different uh boards schism is the bee's knees like literally for that deck it is the, like the best card in the deck it's absolutely insane how strong the deck is the deck can play prosperity now i mean again you can play the dogmatica cards or choose not to you can play regular shadal invoked i know my boy ygo pisano has had a lot of success with just shadal invoked without the dogmatica card so if you're more on a budget like you don't even have to play the dog the dogmatica engine but if you do your deck is probably even more consistent with that but if you don't have access to that just play more hand traps and your deck is still going to get there uh, i don't know how effective the new shadal monster are that came out but i know that the deck is still very strong and you know alistair and company is just you know it's just normal summon alistair if they got ash you probably drew the invocation because you know we always draw the invocation so it's pretty nuts but i really do like it and yeah it's definitely number two here on the list and the, la the last deck i mean you already know it's dragon link i mean <laughs> i mean it's just obvious representation wins tops it won the PPG regional. It did not do well in the the remote duel invitational in Latin America, but that's neither here nor there. Sometimes it's your day, sometimes it's your not. I don't think the deck was even that represented, so kind of makes sense when you think about it. But there's no denying how strong Dragon Link is. I can play through so many hand traps. Can just play so many good cards in the main deck. Can just this has such crazy boards tidying you know um, heretic seal all that stuff the interaction is nuts the deck is very strong the deck is very consistent there's nothing i can sit here and tell you that you don't already know it is currently the best deck of the format and a lot of players are learning how to play with it and play against it so yes while it is the best deck best believe players are ready with drolls they are ready with phantasmes they are ready with nibirus they are ready for the deck but it still proves with the deck still winning that just because you're prepared for the deck doesn't mean that the pilot of that deck isn't prepared for your counter so it's pretty crazy but that's it you guys not going to sugarcoat it those are the top five decks of the format in my opinion i'm pretty spot on i think this time because again this format's pretty straightforward nothing to really uh, go into too much detail with i think that you know the format is pretty much the same 
couple changes here and there. I had, like I said, I had to put Tri Brigade at number five because I do see a lot of future potential. So we definitely got to keep an eye on that deck. But other than that, pretty much everything is the same and just side deck accordingly and you'll be successful. But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, you know what to do. Give it one of these. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about any other decks you think that are going to creep up and definitely take the meta by surprise. And let me know your thoughts on the video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.